plugged into the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. Here's the EcoFlow Delta Pro here. Let's turn this thing on and let's see if this thing runs the air conditioners. So lights on, cool. It thinks we have 30 amp service. Air conditioner one is running. Conditioner two on cold. Output 2,145 watts. Telling me we got about 1.7 hours left if these were to be running full throttle, which they wouldn't. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another no BS video. Today's video is gonna be how the easiest way, in my opinion, to get your EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 or whatever uh, power station you guys have to power your RV while you are in motion or boondocking. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And this method is gonna involve not doing a transfer switch and tying into your existing electrical system and pretending like you're an electrician when you're not um, and something that's completely reversible and in my opinion a lot safer especially if your rv already has a backup generator that's built into it that you can fire up so this is going to be a fail safe method not as automatic as some but this is going to be an awesome you'll like this when i'm done trust me so what i have here um, if you haven't guessed already, this is a 30 amp extension cord that I picked up. I've used this one a couple of times before. It's up to 600 volt rated, um, 106 degree temperature um, rated. And I believe this one, I don't want to speak out of school here. I think this one, yeah, this one's 10 on. So yeah, nice 10 gauge wire in here, um, 30 amp connection. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna push this video along more in the beginning than I will at the end. So let's start here at the bay of my RV. This is gonna be where EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 resides, somewhere in this area. I have plenty of room in mine. This one goes all the way back. It's got enough height, it's got enough width. So this is gonna be where we have EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 live. And the name of the game is to be able to basically just plug in like you were on shore power but plug into the EcoFlow instead and not have to mess with any of the internal wiring inside of the RV. So this needs to be a modular system. So removable, transferable, and I don't want to tap into the, the diaphragm of the actual RV. I don't want to mess with any of the wiring system. We already have a transfer switch in place because it has the Onan in it. So I don't want to add another layer to that if I don't need to. This is a very simple philosophy. So follow along. I'll let you know how it goes at the end. Let me be the experiment and you guys can kind of see if this is a good idea for you. So this is where it's gonna reside. Here's where my shore power cord is stored. It goes inside of this bay. You can see my Romex coming out of this junction box. This is where shore power connects into the actual shore, the main line for the actual breaker panel. So this is where it's tying into. So essentially all we're doing is extending this cord to plug into the EcoFlow, but in a little bit safer way, so you're not having to run this thing through a window. This way it also maintains the safety of the automatic transfer switch should the generator be turned on while this is running. So I'll show you kind of why I'm doing all this as we go. So first thing we're gonna do is start with the female end of the new cord that I just showed you. I'm gonna use my lower bay hole here as a pass-through. It can live under here. Um, so run your female end and bring it all the way to the back just so you have enough play in here to use it so here i am under the rv and i'm starting off and i'm going to kind of take you through this i've left a lot of slack in the cord here you can guess it by now we're running is we're running a power line underneath the rv's chassis and high enough to the chassis floor to keep it out of the way of any mechanical movement and heat so all this essentially is is just a large extension cord but this is going to save you so much time and aggravation and trying to tie into your existing electrical system um, you can fit underneath here without using any jacks or jack stands or anything. So this is going to get a couple of rubberized U brackets to keep this up and tidy down here. And then we're using some heavy duty zip ties across the chassis to go all the way down to keep it nice and close to the rails and away from anything mechanical. So I'm just going to, it's kind of a wacky angle here, but I'm just kind of, I'm just trying to basically fish this around and get it away from anything that's moving and up and around where all the plumbing and stuff is under the chassis of the RV and zip tying as I go and probably like in situations like this double zip tying as I go um, to keep any kind of chafing or anything happening 
Um, but these are, you know, it's pretty heavy duty. I'm gonna try to lay these things like this. This is just temporary, I'm gonna lay things flat so they're not, you wanna make sure you're not laying your cord against anything that could cut into the sheathing. So I'll show you how I'd revise this. This is just so I could hold this up, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you wanna do things like this instead. So you can see how the cord is just resting on top of the frame rail and then secured up here. So there's no rubbing um, that'll occur. And then I'll just cinch it down after I'm done with the cord all the way around, keep it nice and safe. You could also put some pool noodle around the cord too, if you wanna do something like that to keep, if you're nervous about chafing. Um, but there shouldn't be that much movement down here because it's gonna be secured in a lot of places all the way down, just like the plumbing and stuff is. Okay, so the cord's been run under the chassis all the way down and around. And I'm gonna say this a couple times in this video that do this at your own risk. This is for entertainment purposes and I'm just showing you what I did to my RV. So I'm just gonna keep saying that <laughs> because I'm gonna get, I already know the comments I'm gonna get, but this is essentially run all the way down the entire RV safely attached to the RV itself um, with no chafe points anywhere with commercial zip ties, a lot of them. I've probably used about 35 of them. Um, and now I have my excess cord sitting here and I just need to create my pass through into my plastic bay here where the EcoFlow is gonna sit. And I'm gonna modify this end to take off this big handle because that'll minimize the size of the hole I have to drill into my bay. And I don't feel like cutting and splicing. So let me do that now. So I've got a little portable bandsaw here. I'm just gonna cut the plastic uh, handle off of this. I'm not going to show this on video because it's not the safest thing in the world to do, but I'm going to cut that handle off of here. Okay, so that made it a much more manageable handle or a much more manageable plug, I should say. Handle's gone and now it's time to drill the hole to let this pass through the bay. So I'm going to go somewhere about in here with my hole I'm using a two and a half inch hole saw. Done. So I've got my cord running through plugged into the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. Here's the EcoFlow Delta Pro here. Let's turn this thing on and let's see if this thing runs the air conditioners. I know it will. And let's see, now it's gonna pretend, or it's gonna think that we're on shore power driving down the road, which is gonna be beautiful. So let's turn on R120. Just heard the microwave kick on in the motorhome, refrigerator's on, pulling 700 watts, no problem at all. Tell me I got 5.3 hours like that. Let's turn on the air conditioner. And you'll also notice, at least inside this RV bay, plenty of room for an expansion battery or two uh, with their new cables. So right now it's pulling about 590 watts. I'll close this door. We got no cords at the bottom. No weird extension cords running through the RV. Didn't have to tie into the electrical system whatsoever. We've got the slide out open. Here's where our connection is made, right here. Open up our power door. Here's our shore, shore power cable that would plug into an outlet. Oh, that's not very safe like that. Shore power cable plugged into an outlet here. Instead of plugging into the shore power, we're plugging it into our inverter, which is our EcoFlow, which is, it thinks is shore power. And the beautiful part about this is, is that now, if someone turns on the generator inside the RV, the automatic transfer switch that's already built into the RV will override this anyhow, and it's not gonna send power both ways. So you don't have to get into any of your internal wiring. So let's go ahead and kick on an air conditioner or two and see how this thing does about supplemental solar um, using the solar tap and bringing in some solar down to that inverter as well. So lights on, cool. It thinks we have 30 amp service. Air conditioner one is running. Go back here, need to make the bed still. Air conditioner two, on cold, rocking and rolling. Let's go ahead and look at our Delta Pro 3. And thumbs up, guys, for a no BS video. Let's take a look. Output, 2,145 watts. 
telling me we got about 1.7 hours left if these were to be running full throttle, which they wouldn't. If you were driving down the road, you'd only run one of them uh, in the living room. So you could probably split that number in half. You'd probably have three hours of driving time down the street uh, before you'd even have to charge this thing back up. So three hours of fresh, cool air inside the cabin. And that's if this was running 100%. So let's go ahead and shut one of the air conditioners off. And, and remember also the refrigerator's on too, on the coldest setting. So like, you'd probably just wanna run this air conditioner while you're driving down the road. At least that's my reason for doing this instead of running that noisy generator. Let's turn this one off, go back out. We know this running, our mode, Temp is on nine, coldest, fridge is on, service is 30 amps, water heater is powered, refrigerator is powered, AC front, pulling 13 amps right now, so let's have a look. So if you were driving on the road, full throttle with this thing going, air conditioner, fridge, everything else, you have 2.6 hours before you get to campsite, before you need to charge this back up. Here's the other thing you can do. <laughs> Since this already has the gen the Conan, uh, the Conan, <laughs> the Cummins, the Onan generator in it, um, all I have to do is wire up a little 120 volt plug in here, which there's one literally on the other side of this false wall. I can plug this into that um, house power and charge it up once it dies. So you'd have to watch your automatic switching and whatnot because you wouldn't want that live when this is running because then it's just gonna charge itself. But there's a couple of little things you can do here uh, to charge this up. So run some solar into it, which would be through little connect. Oh, that's actually 12 volt solar's on the other side in the back, but you can run some solar into it or the extra battery. And you'd have, you know, one extra battery on this, you'd have over five hours of air conditioning running full time. So this is how you put the EcoFlow uh, Delta Pro 3 in an RV without having to tie into any of the electrical systems. So I hope this video helps you guys out. If it did, I know it's a raw video. It's very, you know, unscripted. It's, I'm not polished in any way, but this is to kind of show you kind of the poor man's way of doing the, the wiring to where, you know, I can drive my family now down the road and not have to worry about running the generator or having to worry about any of that kind of stuff. So hope you guys like it and I'll get you in the next one later.